Guys, we're stuck in the sand. Oh. Stop, stop, stop. Um, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. We're stuck good. We can't back out of this. Damn you, beach. Yep, you heard that right. We got our van, Vinny, stuck in the sand on a beach in a remote spot somewhere in the middle of Alaska. Whew. Okay, come on. This obviously is not a great situation to be in. When we decided to drive our van from the east coast of Canada up to Alaska, the whole point in seeing Alaska and in coming to the Kenai Peninsula specifically, which is where we are right now, was to get away from cities, get away from people, away from everything really, and to see the raw beauty of Alaska. But the remoteness of Alaska also makes it a pretty bad place to get stuck with your vehicle. Up here, there is no proper roadside assistance and we definitely can't push or pull the van out of this situation ourselves with just the two of us. Why would we even drive a vehicle that weighs three and a half tons and is definitely not a 4x4 onto a sandy beach like this one? It doesn't sound like a very smart move. Well, this all happened because we started our day out setting off on a very big mission. You see, ever since we set out to drive across Canada and up to Alaska, Lake has made it his new life mission to learn how to fish. And more specifically, to fish for really big fish. In the last few videos, we caught our very first wild Alaskan salmons all by ourselves, which felt like a huge achievement after weeks of not catching much. But then we discovered that this time of year, there are much more impressive fish swimming around the waters of the Alaskan Pacific Coast. Halibut are flat fish that live in the ocean and can become as big as an adult man. Seriously, look at the size of this fish. In our last video, we tried fishing for halibut from shore for several days without much luck. The morning we got stuck on the beach, we decided we were not going to give up. We came to Alaska looking for big fish and we were not leaving the Kenai Peninsula until we'd caught a really big halibut. Although we didn't know it at this point yet, we were gonna be stuck in the beach in less than 30 minutes. I'm in a fishing uh, Facebook group where people post pictures of catching halibut. Studied all the pictures and a lot of those pictures are in the same spot. But this is like a 20, 30, 40 kilometer stretch of beach. So we've been stalking those Facebook pictures, taking Google Maps, Google Earth, uh, making some comparisons and we think we might have found the spot. We've run this past Google Earth and we think we found the spot. It should look like this. It has to be this spot. Has to be. But now is the time to fish or if we can get there in like half an hour. Okay, so that's great, right? We found the beach where people were catching giant halibuts and we were on our way there. Come on! I want to pick Albert. But there was one small complication. Google Earth and Google Maps did not show any roads leading up to the beach. So we found ourselves on a bit of a wild goose chase. Ah, uh, here it says a sign with no beach access. To get as close to that beach as possible. So we're near the beach. The question now is how do we get to the beach? Without trespassing any private property, preferably. Mm. Yeah, this is a no-go. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to find a different route. And then, when you're about two kilometers from the magical halibut beach. Oh, me. Guys, we're stuck in the sand. Oh. Stop, stop, stop. Um, I can... I can't push us out of this, like... Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, we're stuck. Like, we're stuck good, we can't back out of this. Damn you, beach! Whew. Okay, come on. I mean, we, we, we realize we can't go down this road because it's all sand. But we just came off the gravel here, like, it's it's literally a matter of... of less than 10 feet, like... We just have to get back 10 feet. We just have to get back until there. But we're facing the wrong way. And we're really slanted to the front as well. Like, this is not the ideal situation to get a real, real drive that needs to have weight on the back 
to move properly out of a spot like this. I think we have to try and turn it towards here. Can try. Within a couple minutes of us trying to wiggle the van out of that spot, a stranger actually walked up to offer us some help. Hi. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. We, just, we realized we couldn't drive here, but we were already like 10 feet too far. Someone saw us and they offered to uh, help us out. <laughs> So meet Dan, guys. He was fishing out here with his friends and he came over with his tow rope to try and pull us out of the sand. Our savior. Our savior, our savior, yeah. We would have been stuck here for a long time. As soon as we saw the size of Dan's pickup truck, we were very relieved. In a place like Alaska, there really is no happier coincidence when you're stuck with your vehicle than meeting a kind stranger who offers to help you out. All right. I will just stay here. And has a truck this big. Please let this work. It popped. We broke his tow rope, guys. We broke it. We're too big to drag out of here. We broke that lovely man's tow rope. Oh. <sighs> Crap. So Nate is gonna go. And they're actually gonna run and get a bigger tow thing, tow rope or whatever you call it, um, nearby at a shop 10 minutes from here. Nate's gonna go with them because obviously we're paying for it. And I'm gonna stay here with the van because someone has to stay here. This is bringing back very vivid memories of when we got stuck with our van in uh, the Arctic Circle in Sweden last year in winter. It's very much the same situation, but fortunately there are people around here with big pickups and tow ropes and stuff. So it's not the worst spot for it to happen, but it would have been great if we could have avoided it. About half an hour later, the guys returned with a new, definitely more heavy-duty tow rope. So we gave the rescue attempt another shot. Yeah! 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 Woohoo! This is turning quite the uh, adventure. Dan, who uh, just saved us, our savior. He just said, well, we're heading up to our cabin here. We're gonna grill up some uh, fish that we caught yesterday. You wanna come and check out the property, have some food? And we're like, okay. <laughs> so yeah, here we are. Dan is the freaking man. Put it there. <laughs> now we have this, which is strong enough to pull we, us out of there. We paid for a new strap for Dan. It's the least we could do. He didn't, he wa didn't want to accept any Like a second strap. Or, yeah, I bought another strap for him as well. And they were hungry, so we bought some food in the shop as well. But he didn't want any money. He even wanted to pay for the strap and everything. Like so. how nice can people be? Yeah. And now they're giving us lunch too. I feel like we should be doing more back. We don't have anything to give them. Uh, but we should carry like... Gifts. Gifts, just in case. Yeah. yeah. Coming back for those halibut though. Like this isn't the last of it. We're not giving up now. We're here guys. This is where Dan has a property. Look at this beautiful stretch of land that they have here. This place is amazing. There's some rabbits down there as well. They just roam around here freely. How many cabins do you have actually, Dan? There's three. Three cabins? Okay. And then a wash house. Okay. Bear, wolf, and moose, of course, moose. <laughs> that they're renting out on Airbnb. Perfect for beach fishing, but just don't get stuck on the beach. <laughs> So this is the moose one. As you can tell by that big, massive moose over there. Look at that guy. That's just massive. How long have you been renting it out? Uh, three years. Three years, okay, wow. Well, three and a half if you count COVID. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's only a few well, months. Two years. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. This is the wolf cabin. This one has a kitchen as well, and bunk beds, and this futon, and more room up here. This place is super, super cozy. I love it. If you're looking for somewhere to go around here, on the Kenai, near the coast, definitely check Look these no guys further, out. Look no further, you find your spot. Look no further, you find your spot, and they're super nice people. 
So this yeah. is the bait freezer, well stocked for fishing. Much more bait. I thought we had a lot of bait, but you guys have way more than we do. Yeah. We have a small freezer, we stocked this full of bait. <laughs> not, uh, not this size of bait. So you caught some halibut yesterday? Uh, two days ago. Two days ago. Yeah, wow. We got, we got ten, a, a 45 pounder and some 30 pounders. Oh god. That is impressive. Just delicious. Yeah, I imagine. It looks beautiful. Before and after, huh? Yeah, before and after. This is the before. <laughs> loads and loads of fish. Only a fraction of what you caught, though. Hold on. Is that game? <laughs> that would be too much. <laughs> <laughs> too much butter. <laughs> That's how you cook salmon. That looks good. <laughs> yeah, this looks amazing. Who caught this one? Yeah. <laughs> we don't know. Once they're packed, it's hard mm -hmm. to tell. So this is what halibut looks like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like yeah. that. <laughs> Pre-packaged and everything. <laughs> We vacuum actually, sealed. We actually made a video when I went uh, fishing for the first time. We just hooked it on the package and it just got out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> Joke. This is literally the best day ever. We just spent the whole rest of the day with these guys um, and it was amazing. And tomorrow it's gonna be even better because boy oh boy did we get a surprise for tomorrow we'll tell you more about that in the morning good morning guys um it is currently 7 a.m. Uh, we're actually still at Danny's. We stayed here with the van overnight because we had a few beers yesterday and he offered we could stay. Um, and also today we're doing, what are we doing today? What? We're going fishing. <laughs> on a boat. Danny owns a boat, he loves fishing. We were talking to him like- We told him why we were on that beach. The reason we got stuck is because we were looking for a place to fish for halibut. And we were talking about it last night and he was like, oh, yeah. Well, I have a boat, we can go fishing tomorrow, I love fishing and I'm, I'm probably going to fish with my neighbor anyway, so more people in boats, more fun, just come along. Which like, is amazing. Uh, so okay. <laughs> maybe we're catching some halibut. Yeah, maybe we're catching some halibut, we're going fishing on a boat. This How is cool. amazing. How cool is that? This is a chance encounter. It really, and they're so nice, like, they have the same sense of humor as us. Yeah. Which is amazing, which in and of itself is a chance encounter. <laughs> Getting some supplies, got a bunch of snacks, get some water, because we're going fishing today. On a boat, guys, on a boat! Just tall enough. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have had to go one step higher. At this particular boat launch, they have a very interesting way of putting boats in the water. They first tow your boat trailer behind a tractor and drag the trailer onto a beach. Yeah. I'm so excited. Then the tractor backs up into the ocean until the boat is far enough in the water that it floats yeah, off the trailer. Back into the water. And then you're good to go. There you go. Now to put into perspective why we were so excited to go fishing on a boat, obviously it's already super nice to hang out on the water in a boat with new friends you've just met and we felt really lucky for being able to even just come on this trip. But in addition to that, boat fishing is usually also much better than shore fishing. You can drive the boat to the best spots and you'll often catch more fish and significantly bigger fish. We made it guys, this is supposed to be a really good spot. Danny comes here quite a bit. There's supposed to be some halibut here, some big fish, so I'm really excited. Slightly nervous as well. Like, I feel I might not be able to reel in a really big one, but we'll see. We'll see if we catch something, if it's big. Look at this boat, though. Like, super nice for just the five of us. Here, fishy, 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 fishy. Mm -hmm. 
compared to the rods we have in our van, these are made for big fish. You can tell by the spool. Now you might be thinking, if boat fishing really is that great, why didn't you try to do a fishing charter when you were in Alaska? And we did look into a halibut fishing charter when we were in Homer in our last video, but there was no way we could afford that, as it costs upwards of a whopping 350 US dollars per person for just one day. All this just to say, the odds of us being able to go on a fishing trip like this if Danny hadn't invited us were pretty much zero. This is herring. This is actually Cook Inlet herring. It came out of here. It's homemade. This is salmon out of here too. Okay. Here, yeah, fishy, fishy, fishy. Yeah. Well, I see a little color flashing around out there. Oh, yeah, there he is. Oh, the first halibut. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they hold the weight. Hold the weight. So that's what those guys look like. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. You got to bleed out of here. He's going to flap in there. <laughs> So hold that up, please. Yeah. That's a big yeah. fish head. Yeah, it's yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Get, oh, damn it! You lost it? Yeah, that was a good fish. But it's strong. You see in there? Another halibut. Wow, nice one, Bob. No, the one that. <laughs> Got away. The one, the one that, that got away. That first one, not the second one that I had yet. Not like that. So at this point, Bob had caught two halibut. We started calling him the halibut whisperer because he got more bites than the rest of us on the boat combined. Then the other guys started catching some too. And then. Oh. Yeah. Oh. oh, it's a nice one. Woo! <laughs> that was a strong one. I can feel yeah, it. Yeah, you can see your rod was going crazy. Ah. <laughs> yeah, is that a fish? Oh, yeah, That's it is. Yeah. God. Oh, yeah? You see it? It's coming up from the depths. Oh, there he is. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, okay, oh, that is a big one. Grab your weight. Grab your weight. Oh, just hold the weight. Below my hand. Below my hand. Okay. Hold the weight. Okay, that's a big one. That's a fucking monster. Hold the weight. Hold the weight. Come down a little bit, Kim. Uh, put the weight? Yeah. yeah. Wow, Kim. <laughs> How do you feel? Uh, <laughs> Adrenaline. Yes. <laughs> well, yours is definitely bigger than mine, Kim. Oh my god. That's yours. That's mine. That's massive. <laughs> picture. Yeah. That is amazing. Oh yeah. Yep. Bam. Hi, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't know she had one on there. That's our one. I didn't there. either. He was he was friendly. He didn't try to go. Well, Take a good. picture. You just want to hold him up? Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. I love that. So hold it by the tail. Just the tail. You can hold it by the tail. Okay. Is this one dead enough? <laughs> it probably is. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> so that's why you gotta shoot them if they're big. Hey, Brandon. Oh. Sorry, I can't, I can't. <laughs> so this is Kim's. <laughs> that one is mine. And the, yeah, I caught the big one, but I can't hold it. It's still not bad. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Oh, that's amazing. Halibut work, guys. in the wow. end. Halibut in the tank. Yeah. And this one's really heavy. 
She always outfishes me, you know. <laughs> Last time we fished at, uh, at uh, Ship Creek, I caught some salmon. She caught one that was twice, twice as heavy. Oh. That's how you know you got a good woman. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah, mine is massive. How, how big do you think Size it is? Size matters. <laughs> 25 to 30 pounds. Yeah. And then can you imagine they go up to 100, 200 even? Then? Happy. <laughs> Good parking job. <laughs> yeah. He's done this before. A lot of tide moving and the wind is blowing you. You yeah. parked her up perfectly, Dan. I'm just yeah. glad I'm not that guy. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have the easiest job. up the catch. Yeah, just enough. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Just enough. I'm pretty sure we had 10 hooks on there. I want a picture with it, but I'm still going to drop mine. Come on, Kim, you got to hold it. Can I take it by the gill? Yeah, you can. And then let it fail. Well, I had a nice, like a I had a nice red on the Kenai the other day. Oh my god, <laughs> that is so heavy. <laughs> so that's my fish. You have to help me put it back on. The fish bucket. It's massive. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. at least six, so. Be very careful with that knife off. It, it's sharp as a razor. Yeah, so. <laughs> here. And and come right down to this line here. The line here. And then right down the line. And you always miss some. And that knife? Nice. And now, yeah, I take that knife. I said, are and I, said no. I take the knife and I <laughs> press it down against that backbone. Okay. And then Push it down on it pretty hard. You want to just slide right along those bones. You can feel it sliding along the bones. Wow, nice. Is that all right? Yeah. Very good. Okay. Good job. Bad for the first one. Now we skin it. That's it. Dunk it. <laughs> Watch and learn. Yeah, I'm watching. <laughs> Learning from the master himself. Well, I've done a couple of these things now. I imagine you have. Look at how smooth that is. I remember the first one I ever filleted. A friend of ours came over, and somebody, she was working at one of the native villages, and they gave her a 60 pound fish <laughs> present. So she didn't know what to do with it. No, Bob knows how to do everything like that. So I brought it over to my place. I didn't have a clue what to do with this big. It was way bigger than it was like that yeah, big. Yeah, should be double. Look at that meat. That's crazy. <laughs> Small fillet. <laughs> we lost it together. <laughs> And down to the beach to uh, with Bob to get uh, rid of all the fish uh, carcasses and stuff. And he said there might be some eagles around there. Come down, pluck off some of the uh, carcasses. So. This is the vehicle, though, to drive on the beach with. Yeah, yeah. A four-wheel drive, a truck. Like this is the one. Right there. Yeah, they're moving in. The birds are moving in. Oh, there he is. 
clearly this is not all the halibut that we got to take but we have a small fridge and an even smaller freezer um, so we left most of the fish that we caught for the other guys and Bob and Joyce also gave us this this is some Alaskan smoked salmon and this is some caribou that they hunted themselves thank you guys well we're gonna have to take stuff out of our freezer though because it's full, yeah, full of mostly bait actually. So I don't think we could have possibly run into a better person out there on that beach when we were stuck. Um, if we hadn't met Danny, none of this, like these past few amazing Nothing days, like this would have never happened. We would have never met all those other amazing people. So Danny, thank you so much for everything, for being our best. savior, for being our savior, um, and for being such an amazing, generous person. And if you're coming to Alaska and you want to stay in a beautiful spot, uh, we'll put the link for Wild Man Getaways in the description box below. And Kim said, oh, you just drove a little bit too far on the beach. But I would like to say, I drove just far enough. Exactly far enough for Danny to come into our lives. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.